Hi, Cheryl here with HotBlogTips.com and our Hangout. I'm here with Mitch Mitchell of I'm Just Sharon and Brian D. Hawkins of The Hot Blog Tips. And for this Hangouts on Air, we're going to talk about adding links to your YouTube description. And I have some suggestions for do's and don'ts. And these are actually just suggestions because I already know everybody's going to do it their own way. But one of the do's is if your video is on a topic, you're going to want to add, of course, a link to your website. I suggest you add one link, just one link to your website. And if the video is about a particular article, a particular product, then you're going to want to add a permalink to your site for that particular page that, that is directly related. And if you make a video and then you're going to write a blog post, related to it, you can always go in, edit your description on YouTube to add the link to that particular blog post. So if you have to wait a, you know, a few hours to get your blog post made and then go add your link, don't freak out, you're okay. Also for links in your YouTube descriptions. If you cite an article, a product, a tool that is relevant to the video, and is also on a reputable site, add a link in the description to that. And I'm talking about things that, that are on sites that you don't own. So that way if you're talking about a particular site, the viewers can go and find exactly what you were talking about. Now for the don'ts. I love don'ts. Don't always add a link to your homepage. I see a lot of videos and in the description every time they have a link to their homepage. Try to link to something in particular on your site if you're going to put a link to your site. And don't add links in your description to every freaking site you own, every profile. I go in, I look at YouTube descriptions, and I'm seeing links to three sites that the person owns. Their Twitter, their Google+, their LinkedIn, their Facebook page, their you name it, they've got a whole list of links. And what that comes down to is you're giving people too many choices. And as we know with bookmarking tools and a lot of other things, the more choices people have, the less likely they're going to click on anything. So try to, try to keep it to a minimum. If you want to do one to your site and then you want to try to recycle them if you don't think they're going to go buy your product, give them one link to one of your other profiles and that's it. So just remember you don't have to always link to your site either. You can link to one of your profiles if you don't have something directly related. And look at it as the idea of making a video is to drive traffic to a particular site for a particular action. You're informing them about your product, about your service, about something you know, and that's what it's for. It, it's not your personal link building thing. If you're using YouTube videos to build links because you think, oh my God, Google's going to look at all these links coming from YouTube to my site and be like, wow, this, this site must be important because look at all these links. No. You're, they're just going to look at you and say, oh look, this guy can put links in his description. Isn't that freaking cool? And they, they discount them. And your readers are going to look at it and go, oh look, a spammer. Isn't that nice? So keep your links to a minimum, link to only extremely related things, and don't be linking to unrelated garbage stuff, and like I said, keep it to a bare minimum. So those are my, my suggestions on do's and don'ts for linking in your YouTube description. So Brian and Mitch, I know you guys have heard this before because, well, it's something I, I often say to everyone. So what do you guys think when you see YouTube descriptions that either re link to unrelated things or have buku buttloads of links? Well, I, I think that when I see those 10 or 15 or 20 links at the bottom of the description, it's just too much to absorb. I, I look at that and I'll just move on because... I've already watched the video. Now I'm reading your description. Now I have to look at all those. It's just too much. It's just too much to take in all at once. 
So you're right, I, and then I didn't really even think about that until you mentioned that. But yeah, I I, I can't ever remember clicking on it. Plus, I mean, it's who cares what your LinkedIn thing is from one video, you know? And that's not really the there, there's a time and a place for everything. So yeah, I agree with that. I think if you're doing a video uh, showing someone how to use LinkedIn or how to use, you know, a Facebook page or something, then then that's when instead of linking to your site unless you have a topic on that you know say you have a category of all using LinkedIn then you can link to that or to your LinkedIn profile but yeah you need to keep them specific and not Some things you don't want to link back to your thing too I mean if you're if you're doing a video that's completely unrelated to your to your particular blog it's probably you're probably better suited to link maybe to your Facebook page or your Twitter account or or your personal blog or something like that it's probably better all the way around I'm not talking even SEO I'm just talking about you know people visiting I mean you don't want to bring people you know that watched your completely unrelated video to your blog is just gonna raise your bounce rate just click right off right away is this is it doesn't it's not what they're looking for right Whatever. Mitch how about you well, I'll tell you the truth. I have been putting my main link to my uh, business site and then adding another. Um, and occasionally I've added even a third um, that's related on topic, even if I have them on different websites. Um, truthfully, I, I'll tell you the truth. I haven't really paid all that much attention to the links. <laughs> I, know, I guess I, I just don't. Uh, mainly because you can't just click on them, uh, or if you can, because you mentioned permalinks at the beginning, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, now I put a link in, but it's not in, a clickable link. Yes, in the dis in the YouTube description, you can put a link, and it is clickable. Then you I have to add that, that HTTP and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, you need to add the HTTP oh, to start slash slash. I didn't know you could add that because I thought if you added that, all of that was going to show. So now that I know it, that. It will show a raw link, but right. it makes it hot. Yeah. Well, I thought it would show. You know, I there's certain things where you add the format and then you go and look at it and all the HTTP stuff is showing. And you say, okay, you can't do that. I made that as an assumption for YouTube. So now that you've just given me some knowledge that I didn't know. Um, so there you go. That's why I've never paid attention to it because I've never noticed anything standing out. And a lot of people I know that I've talked to, they look at it as I'm going to add a bunch of links because YouTube videos and descriptions get scrapped. I mean, scrap sites pick them up by the gazillions. The thing is, most of those scrap sites I've ever looked at never give you a hot link. So if you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to get my links spread across all these other scrap sites too. A, I don't want a link from a scrap site. and B, it's probably a worthless freaking link. So, but yeah, your links will be hot. YouTube has placed it, has put in now, so that in a comment you cannot put a link in a comment. Right. That but I mean. in your YouTube description, you yes, you most definitely can. And, and I need to go back and edit uh, because I did not <coughs> know that. And um, I mean, you're right. The fact is that if I'm already going back to my website, and but there's a page on there, I don't need the website and the page. I don't need both. I may, however, want a page that's on my website. If I'm relating to a blog post, um, I might want to highlight the page as well. For instance, something I do is called Charge Master, which means nothing to most people, but it's a healthcare thing. So I may do an article talking about Charge Master for the blog, and I have the video, but I also want people to go to the website to actually see the description of Charge Master on there because that's the page that's kind of my marketing page for what I do. So yeah, I, I don't think there's anything that. wrong with that. Yeah, but but I also have been putting in my name, my main page, which talks about all the things I do, and I could see how that would distract from the specific topic that I want since I have pages for all the different things that I do. So that's that's a good suggestion. I don't need And I think that if say you're talking about Charge Master and I go to the front, say I'm just looking into it and I go to the front of your your site 
what's the chances of me searching through your site and all of that when if you lead straight to that article I might be able to say oh my god he does know what he's talking about I understand now right and that's where I think a lot of people get okay I'm gonna lead them to the front of my site and they're gonna go all through it and they're gonna buy everything I have or read every article and to me I think that if we if we stick with directing them to your newsletter, to your sign-up page, to exactly what you want them to know and do, I think people will be a lot better off. And hopefully, from now on, when I go and I start clicking on the descriptions, I don't have to look at 500 links people have put to everything. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I've never paid attention, but now that I know you can click on it, or, you know, set it up that way, I think that's going to change uh, my perception of it because I I sat there trying to figure out here you go I kept trying to figure out well how is this gonna show up that it's me when it's just like me putting on a, a link that doesn't do anything now maybe there's that <laughs> opportunity to, to link I, well, I, I've been wondering that truthfully I've been wondering that that's why I always figured you know there's the embed get them to the blog and let them you know watch it from the blog so good stuff see I, I've learned something today People, YouTube is oh. one of YouTube is actually on Fuzzy Wuzzy a top referrer. So yeah, it all comes from people clicking those links in the YouTube description. And I put one link in each description to a, a specific page that I want them to visit. And it's one of my top referrers. So they will click a link, but I have found that limiting their choices can push them in the right direction. Good stuff. Well, I did want to bring up one quick point too. On those descriptions, the most for the most most of it's going to be concealed. You got to click for more. So a lot of people aren't going to see that. A lot of people aren't going to bother. So it's still important to have some type of branding, or like your lower third there, or this. You know, something that people can see. Because uh, Cheryl gets a lot of uh, traffic from people actually searching for her. Fuzzy Wuzzy Anapales, and then whatever the product is she's got on her particular videos. So they'll actually leave YouTube and type into the search Fuzzy That's Wuzzy Anapales and, and find her that way. So without that branding and that name recognition, she wouldn't get that. So that's important too. So and we a, can always rely on those links in that description. And a lot of people on my product videos I will put the link to the product first but that's not always what you want to do I mean the link first is great and fine because it's above the little show more and people can click it right away and that's for I would use that for a direct product if you are one product on that video otherwise you're gonna want in the top of the description instead of a link I would suggest you're putting your best I think it's 76 characters so when it pulls up on a search they're only gonna see a limited amount of text of what your video is and you want that to to correlate directly with your video you also want it to to grab their attention like you would any other meta that shows up in a search you know something that that says look at this this is what you wanna see but yeah if I'm doing a product video I'll put the link very first because they are there the product videos I do are so specific that they know they're looking at a product that they want to buy. But as far as like the Q and A more more entertaining videos or educational videos, I put the link further down. And because that is not the main topic, the main topic what I do with those is totally different, and it's all about branding. So it you can put a link first, but is it going to be beneficial and look better are you going to draw more traffic with a link in the search results or with a bold statement as your first thing seen and then hope they click through <coughs> so it kinda and I could go on on video descriptions and that'll have to be another hangout but there's a lot of things you can do I suggest just not looking too spammy and putting your name out there and giving good information so people will want to type your name in and see more. Cool. Anything else? Nope. You guys are set. Mitch is going to have hot links in his description later today. Yes, he is. So thanks for watching. This has been our Hot Blog Tips Hangout 
number three of the day with Brian D. Hawkins, Mitch Mitchell, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Thanks. Good stuff, Cheryl.